If you've looked up some of the best gimbals on the market, chances are that you've come across the Moza Air 2. But at $600, is it really all that it's cracked up to be? Well, that's what we're about to discuss here today. The short answer is yes. Is it the cheapest gimbal on the market? No. But for the price that you're paying, you're getting a ton of features that give a ton of value and make it definitely worth the price of admission. One thing that you will notice at first glance when you look at the Moza Air 2 is that the motor is actually lower than the camera body itself. What's amazing about this is that with competitors, you're gonna find that the motor gets in the way while you're shooting, making it hard to see, which is kind of counterintuitive to what you're trying to accomplish when you're shooting footage. So with the Moser Air 2, with the motor being lower than the camera, you're gonna be able to see everything just fine without the need of an external monitor. So another amazing thing about the Moser Air 2 compared to other gimbals is just how easy it is to balance. So if you take a look at it, you'll see that there are different locking mechanisms. So you can balance each individual component one at a time without say, you know, you're trying to balance it over here and then, you know, this comes loose and there's multiple locking mechanisms. So you're gonna be able to balance each individual, you know, degree of the gimbal while you're trying to get the whole camera balanced. So you're not gonna worry about anything coming off balance and the camera not flipping this way while you're trying to balance it on the side axis or, you know, what have you. Another really nice thing with the Moza Air 2 is actually the handle that doubles as a stand and folds out as kind of a mini tripod. And, and this makes it really easy and convenient when you're trying to balance the camera, for instance, or if you're trying to put the batteries in, or if you just wanna sit there and adjust the settings. And then you can fold the legs back in and use the handle as like a double grip. Then you can kind of, you know, have that extra added stability being able to hold the gimbal with both hands. So another great feature on the Moser Air 2 is actually the auto tuning system. If you look here, you'll see that it's kind of shaking the camera around. What it's doing is it's detecting the weight of the camera and kind of interpreting, you know, how much force or how much each individual motor needs to work to keep everything balanced and steady when you're shooting, which makes for an overall nicer and smoother experience. So when you look at the back of the gimbal and you're looking at the actual control of it, you'll notice that there's kind of this little joystick in a way. And this manually allows you to move up or down, left to right. And it kind of functions similarly to a joystick on a video game controller, if that makes any sense. But what it does is it allows you that extra control when you're on set and you're shooting footage to be able to you know, manually adjust where the camera is exactly pointed at. So something else that's really cool is just how much control you have over the tilt, the pan and the roll. So if you look at the LCD screen, you'll see that you can adjust the speed, you can lock some of these in here. So let's say that you wanna pan, but you don't, want the, you don't want the movement to follow you up or down. You only want it to follow you when you're panning left or right. Well, you can go ahead and you can lock the roll, you can lock the um, tilt there and then keep the pan on follow and then set the speed on how much do you want the gimbal to kind of mimic your movements when you're going. Or you can go ahead and lock everything and the camera will pretty much stay fixated on the exact position that you're in. So whether you're moving this way or that way, however you're doing it, you're gonna see that the actual gimbal is not going to be following your movements. It's gonna stay locked in that same position with the same you know, subject focus that you set it to begin with. So something else that I found really helpful with this gimbal is actually this trigger right here, which if you double click, will automatically reset the position of the camera. So if you're on, set shooting something and especially this is really helpful for if you're shooting documentary style videos like i shoot a lot of paranormal investigations and you know you have to be quick and on the fly with what you're capturing and if you are say you know moving the gimbal around moving the camera around quite a bit while you're shooting and now the position's a little bit off and you want to go ahead and just recenter your focus back to the original position double clicking on that trigger is gonna automatically do that. Now, something that's kind of cool that I haven't really 
used a whole lot because I don't really do a lot of, you know, out and about vlog type of videos. But if you are doing vlogs, what's nice is if you triple click the trigger, it's going to go into selfie mode. So that's just another cool little bonus, nice feature that's on here. So something that I really wish that I could show off, but I can't because I don't have the, the other right components to it. Um, but there's... I believe it's called the uh, eye focus. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, uh, but essentially on the gimbal, there's a follow focusing tool with this little knob here on the side. And if you have this additional component that you can either wired or wirelessly uh, connect to the gimbal, you can actually you follow focus right here on the side of the gimbal without like having to mess around with the lens. Because I mean, let's be honest, if you're shooting, you don't want to try to manually focus with the with the lens. And you know, you're essentially doing the functions of first AC right there on the side of the gimbal. So something else that is really cool is actually with the battery life. You're going to get, now listen to me very carefully, 16 hours of battery life on this with fully charged batteries, which means you know, there's power to spare. So one thing that you can do, uh, once again, I don't have the right, you know, connector to get this to work. Um, that's something else I'm going to need to buy down the line. But what you can actually do, uh, depending on what camera that you're using with this gimbal, you can power your camera directly through the gimbal. So something else that's kind of nice about the batteries itself, just kind of a small touch, rather than trying to worry about the batteries, you know, coming out from the bottom of the gimbal and trying to fool around with loading it that way, you can just mount the stand back onto your gimbal. And then on the handle itself, you'll find a quick release and you can just, you know, put the battery in that way so I find that very helpful but also you can also just plug a charger directly into the side of the gimbal and then you won't even really need to worry about you know messing around with changing the batteries or taking them in and out to begin with but if you did want to that quick release is a lot more convenient than some of the other gimbals that are on the market all right so in conclusion is the Moza Air 2 worth $600 I mean let's put it like this this is DIY filmmaking right if you're following this channel and you're, you've been following Franz Productions, you know I am not rich. By no means do I have a lot of money to spend. So whenever I do buy a piece of gear, I do buy a new piece of equipment, I always do my research and make sure that it's worth getting. And I can tell you that the Moza Air 2, even at $600, is going to be worth the money. I would say save up. If you want to get a good gimbal, this is the one to get. You can buy a cheaper gimbal and you're going to get what you pay for and it's really not going to be that helpful and you're going to need to upgrade and spend more money anyway. So if you want to get the most value for your money and you want to buy one really great gimbal that's it's going to, you know, pull you through a lot of shoots, whether you're shooting something like a feature film or you're shooting, you know, promotional videos for, you know, corporate clients or if you're doing documentary footage, you know, even taking this out on, on ghost hunts has been a lifesaver. If you um, know me, you know I do the Rogue's Hollow Paranormal. And if you've seen some of the earlier episodes of Rogue's Hollow Paranormal, the camera footage is not nearly um, as stable. It's pretty shaky in the earlier videos, even when I was using a shoulder rig. But once I got this gimbal and I started, you know, shooting the investigation with this gimbal instead, there's been a huge difference in the overall quality of the um, of the stability there for the footage of the investigation. So yes, yes, I recommend buying the Moza Air 2. Um, but I want to know what you think. So if you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and turn that bell on for notifications. And then also let me know in the comments what you think. Have you used the Moza Air 2? Or is there another gimbal that you'd recommend for independent filmmakers instead? But for now, that's a wrap. I'll catch you in the next episode.